Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon. I'm an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, and I'm your host for this series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at contact cards and what we can do with them. Join me here, if you will. We're going to take a look at Teams. I've gone ahead and I have selected, let me zoom in so you can see this while we're talking, the chat area in our navigation bar. And I've selected one of the people that I have chats ongoing with, our Cherokee Jones user. And you've seen me use several of these users in some of the prior episodes. You've been going through our playlist. You'll see that when I highlight Cherokee Jones, I see in the details area off to the right that the user account is selected. I've got the chat tab selected and any active chats that may be ongoing will be displayed there. But what we're interested in is going over here to the Cherokee Jones icon, the circle that represents her initials. And we can see that when I hover there, I get a pop-out card. This is what we call the contact card. Now what this does is give me a little bit more detail about the Cherokee Jones user. I can see an indicator of status right below at the lower right hand corner of the circle. It does say she's offline and if I come back up here and hover, sure enough we can see that it does indicate she's offline. I also see that that status indicator is reproduced in the card actively as well. I do get whatever email address was provided for her as a user. And I do get a series of icons that are active, even though they don't have color on them. Uh, and you can see the most of them are active anyway. One of them is grayed out right now, but I can spawn a chat directly with the user from their contact card. I can email them directly from here. I can actually just send a message right down here as well. I can see the organizational structure and where this user fits in in our organization by using the organization icon, which is actually very important in large organizations where you may or may not know everybody, may or may not know what they do, but you're asked to interact with them, especially when you're working remote and you're not able to access people in the office directly that may be able to help you figure out who these people are. It's a great way to be able to go view the organizational structure. I do see a grayed out icon, which says there's no available camera found. I'll explain why that's grayed out in just a moment. And then, I have a phone icon. I can actually make a phone call if there is a phone number on file for this user in the system, and I can do a video call or a video message, excuse me, a video meeting and or an audio call with her right from within this contact card. Now, why is this grayed out? And by the way, you may see one or more of these icons grayed out as you look at contact cards in your version of Teams. Mine says no available camera found. Now I am running this version of Teams that we use in many of the episodes in a virtual machine on my Windows 10 laptop so that I can show you an isolated instance of Teams that we can use for the episodes. In that virtual machine, I don't actually have a camera available, which is why it says there's no available camera. But the reality is that if I get out of the virtual machine and I go to our IT Pro TV Teams desktop client, which I've used in a couple of episodes, which is running physically on my Windows 10 laptop, I actually do have a camera on the laptop. And if I do the same thing with Courtney, our director for these episodes, and I hover over her contact uh, information, bringing up her card, and we can see as I do that, that we see her there, her status is available, we see all the icons. And if I, whoops, if I come down here, I can see that that icon is actually available because I do have a camera with video capabilities on my system and I can make a video call to her as well right from here. Now, we're not gonna bother her by calling her because she's actually working the camera for us behind the scenes on this episode, and we don't wanna bother her while we're doing that, but the reality is I have five different icons here that I can interact with, four of which involve sending and receiving and reaching out to the user in question with information. The fifth is really an organizational overview lets me see this user in the context of all of the organization and understand where they fit, what they do, what their role is, and things I may want to know about them. I'll be back with more episodes as we continue our conversations in this series. But until then, happy teaming. Check out the playlist for more Microsoft Teams tips and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon, and thanks for watching.